Welcome to the World of Chiropractic, where we take one epic journey around the world as we explore the seven regions of the World Federation of Chiropractic. My name is Dr. Rebecca Wilkes, and I invite you to travel with me as we go on this exciting adventure around the globe. Today we have Dr. Yukai who is here to give us a little bit more information about Malaysia. So welcome, Dr. Yukai. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. So what made you choose chiropractic as a career? Okay. Uh, actually, when we talk about my chiropractic journey, it all began uh, back to my mother's experience uh, of chiropractic um, back in about 20 years ago. Uh, so my mom actually have some neck and back issue. So, and she was recommended by my English teacher to go to a chiropractor in a major city. We call it Kuala Lumpur. Uh, back then, my hometown is at Ipoh, about two and a half to three hours uh, journey drive to Kuala Lumpur. So my mom actually follow uh, my English teacher uh, to the uh, chiropractor. So after a few sessions, uh, she actually... Uh, see quite an improvement. Then, uh, since then, when I grew up, so my mom recommended me chiropractic. From what you had said before the interview, is that chiropractic was not necessarily in your plans. What were you planning to do as a career? Actually, I mean, since my childhood, I like to be a scientist. Or even uh, when I, as I go, uh, grow up, I like mathematics a lot. So maybe I have to be a mathematician or something like that. But it looks like you found the right career for you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about Malaysia? Okay. Uh, in terms of Malaysia, there's a multi-ethnic and multicultural country. So we have uh, Malay, uh, Chinese, uh, Indian, the three major ethics, and also a few other uh, ethnic city in Malaysia as well. So Malaysia, we have uh, we call Peninsula Malaysia and also Borneo. Uh, which is uh, another side of Malaysia in terms of island-wise. So we have quite a number uh, in terms of our governing system. So we have a kind, uh, the, we call it a uh, king or a yang di petua agong in Amele. So they will be rotating to be the, uh, chair, uh, the like a king to govern the whole country in a way. So they will be electing uh, among themselves who will be sitting onto the throne uh, from time to time, which is a five-year uh, period. And in terms of food-wise, I believe uh, all Malaysians would agree with me it's a heaven for food. So all kind of uh, food, uh, ranging from the local dishes or uh, international dishes as well. Speaking of food, what would you say is your favorite local dish? Uh, in terms of, I like sweet food. So... Uh, I would like uh, like a chandoy, uh, we call it in the local name. So basically it's a shrimp ice then with some uh, syrup and some beans on it. Beans on top of it? Yeah, uh, red beans, uh, like a green color type of uh, paste. Yeah. Interesting. Could you tell us a little bit about some things to do in the area? Okay, in terms of Kuala Lumpur, we have our, uh, of course, a uh, high rise building that you can visit, or even a KL Tower, or the, yes, the Twin Tower. Okay, we, uh, you can go up to the bridge, uh, to view the night uh, line. So, uh, below the bridge, there's a shopping mall and so on. So, if you like city type of the NY Roman. If you like more towards the nature, we have, uh, also beach side. And also, if you're willing to travel, we have a few states that are quite nice in terms of nature, scenery, or even deep forests, and so on as well. And I hear something about some caves with apes or monkeys. Yes. Uh, uh, so for the cave, you need to take about two hour uh, flight from uh, our capital city. That's where I mentioned just now, you will be a Bronio site, uh, Sabah, Sarawak. So if you are a cave person, you can go to uh, Sarawak, uh, Kuching. We have a very big cave. I think can, they can fit a few uh, Boeing 737 in. If you are a uh, uh, night to dive, 
we have a very famous uh, diving uh, environment uh, at the Sabah, uh, if you know it called Sampona Island. Okay, so scuba diving. Yes, scuba diving. So a lot of things to do, it sounds like. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Meet. I'm your host. Today we're talking about all things Malaysia. Malaysia can be divided into Peninsular Malaysia and the island of Borneo, which is the third largest island on the planet. If you visited Malaysia, you might hear snippets of Bahasa Malaysia, English, Tamil, Mandarin, or any of the other 137 living languages. Capital city Kuala Lumpur is a shopping destination bar none, but did you know the Petronas Towers in the city are the world's largest twin buildings? Neat! Malaysia boasts impressive tourist destinations, including dive sites and cave systems. The Clearwater Cave System is the ninth longest in the world and is a World Heritage Site. Measuring 3.5 kilometers in diameter, or 2.7 miles, the world's largest roundabout makes its home in Malaysia. Malaysia is a megadiverse country, which means it's home to a number of endemic species. Certain flora and fauna that you could find in Malaysia and nowhere else are species of tiger, pangolin, sea turtle, hornbill, orangutan, and the juicy, delicious pomelo. Neat. Well, let's, let's move on to your professional career. So I understand you're at the International Medical University in Kuala Lumpur, is that correct? Yeah, uh, I joined AMU back in 2015 as a clinician. So after a year of practicing as a clinician, I took uh, my master in public health. Then I joined the academic uh, two years ago, like three years ago, uh, to teach and see patients as well. Tell us a little bit more about International Medical University. Okay, so in terms of uh, IMU or International Medical University, uh, it started back in 1992. So uh, back then it was not a university yet. It is a college, so we call it International uh, Medical College or IMC. Uh, later on, uh, it was awarded with a uh, university title. Then we moved to uh, become a uh, University, which is the uh, currently International Medical University, and uh, back in two thousand ten, that's where a uh, chiropractic program was started, uh, which I'm in part of the pioneer uh, batch that uh, in this program as well. So in two thousand fourteen, all of uh, my twenty eight uh, batchmate uh, graduate together, and that's where chiropractic start to grow in Malaysia. Could you tell us if there are any limitations to the practice of chiropractic in Malaysia? Okay, maybe I just give a little bit background how chiropractic developed in Malaysia when we move towards like what is the current uh, situation in terms of limitation and uh, so on. So maybe uh back uh uh maybe back in the Malaya time, there's a chiropractor named uh Doctor Andrew Martin that uh, came to Malaysia to practice. But since then, there's a lot of uh, uh, chiropractor from uh, overseas that come to practice. And then there's quite a number of Malaysian that fly overseas to talk the chiropractic program, which is not available in Malaysia at that time. So since uh, 2010, uh, my uh, IMU have the program, the number has been increasing uh, exponentially. And in terms of uh, chiropractic in Malaysia, is classified uh, by as a, a complementary uh, medicine. So in terms of complementary medicine, it's also only developed uh, for the past uh, few years. So when the TNCM Act uh, is uh, gazetted, uh, there's a law in Malaysia that governs chiropractic. It was first gazetted in 2013. But uh, after that, there was some amendments to the uh, Act. So it has been revised in 2016. And since has been enforced, and chiropractic has been named as a recognized uh, practice area uh, for complementary medicines. And since then, we have a few key uh, date that uh, enforce chiropractic. Uh, however, uh, they're still in transition to the full enforcement of the law. So actually, chiropractic still uh, have some backlash uh, during this transition period. 
So in Malaysia, what we face is uh, there's a lot of uh, we call bone setter that claim to use the name of chiropractor that we face uh, currently in Malaysia. Until the full law has been uh, enforced, uh, there's still the uh, challenges that we will face in Malaysia. You had also mentioned to me that because it's not necessarily regulated, there are a group of chiropractors who follow the World Federation of Chiropractic. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Okay, so in term, because uh, there's uh, people claiming to be chiropractors but do not undergo a full chiropractic uh, accredited program because uh, they, they usually is either a Chinese uh, practitioner or, or is uh, go down from a family to family type of practice. And we do face this kind of challenge when we try to report to the Ministry of Health and so on. But because of the limitation of the law, uh, they can't really uh, take action towards these uh, people until the act is fully enforced. It sounds like you have been making strides within the law most recently to to acquire licensing uh, at some point in the near future. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when the second phase, that's where the registration starts. So if you are to practice chiropractic, you are required to register with the law or else you'll be in offense. Uh, Let's talk about Malaysia a little bit more. If somebody were considering moving to the area, a chiropractor was, do you have any advice? Uh, in terms uh, of uh, chiropractor, foreign uh, chiropractor that coming into Malaysia, there's a few things that they need to know. So uh, one of them is the five-year experience. So for a chiropractor to come into Malaysia to practice, they need to have at least five years working experience. Uh, before applying for their uh, support from the ministry for uh, their work permit and so on. Yeah. So five years experience. Uh, is there anything that you could, any advice that you would offer new graduates or students? Well, personally, I would advise them uh, once they graduate, uh, do follow your principle as you are practicing. So uh, in Malaysia, some I, I noticed when they are still an intern, they are very passionate, but once they graduated, they will go into more towards uh, how they're going to earn money. Although, although it's not wrong to earn money, but sometimes they would put aside their initial principle uh, just to earn money and so on. Yeah. Right. And I will say that uh, never stop learning. Uh, although you graduated from the program, but when you stop learning, that's where you are falling behind. So it sounds like you're encouraging our young professionals to be epic. Can you talk a little bit about be epic? Yes, uh, this is also one of the uh, uh, World Federation of Chiropractic principles as well. So it has been, since I think last year, has been approved for the be epic. So we also, as an association, uh, we also uh, support this uh, epic uh, uh, campaign as well. So Epic is uh, we first with evidence based. So in IMU itself, we support evidence based practice, and also people centered in terms of practices, and not doctor centered, which is our uh, very long ago. It could be a doctor centered type of practice, but moving into the current centuries, so we move towards the people centered practice as well. And interprofessional practice is very important as well. So we collaborate with each other. We have uh interpersonal or professional practice and also collaborative so we must be open up our mind when we do cooperate with other healthcare professions as well. So I thank you so much Dr. Yukai for donating your time today to tell us a little bit more about where you're from and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, thank you. I would uh, welcome everyone if, it's, uh, the, if the pandemic uh, persists. But when this ends, you can fly over to visit Malaysia as well.